I've just, it's just dawned on me. Uh, I have, what, 12 minutes left before the, the memory runs out. And I, uh, I'm full up on my... Uh, I've used all the memory on my machine. And I can't clear... I'd have to clear the machine somewhat to be able to download this to clear the memory so I can do the fourth session. So I'm going to have to be quick. Okay. Um, so uh, the induction hypothesis says that, that uh, from this variable you can derive the string y. Okay. Uh, and again, by the induction hypothesis, uh, because this takes less than k plus 1 steps, okay? and similarly this one takes less than k plus 1 steps, and the, hypo the induction hypothesis says from this variable you can derive z. Okay? Now there's a rule, and, and you know, again, <laughs> this is why the rule was put into the uh, rule base of your grammar, uh, you know, your big R, the set of rules, and this is why this sort of thing was put in. You have a rule of this form. Okay? Now if this uh, variable, from it you can derive y, and from this uh, variable you can uh, derive z, well you'll end up uh, getting yz and yz, okay? And that means that this, which uh, takes k plus 1 steps to do, can derive uh, the string uh, yz, which is x, okay, uh, in k plus 1 steps. So you, you've proved it, alright? Uh, so end of proof sign here. Okay? So there it is. You proved it from from this variable. You in k plus one steps, you can uh, derive the string x. Okay. So that completes the proof of the second part, and hence the whole theorem. Okay. All right. Now a little note here, and uh, I'm going to have to be quick. <laughs> All right. Um, so we proved that uh, PDAs can recognize context-free languages. That was, the, that was the big proof, the whole point. And, and there are two equivalents. So you can go, for a PDA there's an equivalent CFL. For a CFL there's an equivalent PDA. Okay? That, that was the whole, whole thing. Now, uh, we can, now, using this and previous knowledge, we can find a relationship between a regular language and a context-free language. Which is, which is interesting. And it works in the following way. Well, look, he, he, follow this piece of logic. And uh, t t up to this point here, that's the text. And for clarification, from here to here, that's me. Okay, just sort of clear, ho hopefully make things a bit clearer. Okay, now look, what is a regular language? By definition. It's a regular language, it's a language that can be recognized by a finite automaton. Right? By definition, we've done, done that many, many times. But a finite automaton is a special case of a stack machine. It's a special case of a PDA. It's, it's, a, it's a PDA which ignores its stack. So in other words, you, you could take a PDA and all its transition rules, uh, you just put epsilons uh, when it comes to the stack, the stack uh, parameters. You just put epsilons everywhere. Okay? So... Um, so uh, a finite a finite automaton is a special case of a of a PDA. It's it's a it's a PDA that ignores its stack, right? Okay. So a regular language uh, from a regular language uh, that corresponds to a finite automaton that uh, recognizes it. Okay. But a finite automaton is a special case of a PDA, right? Now. We've just shown with this long proof that we've just finished after about two balls worth that uh, context-free languages are equivalent to PDAs. So you've got, you've got you know, arrows both ways, right? Now, uh, so that implies that from a PDA uh, you can get a context-free language, okay? From a P from you know, going this way, from a PDA you get a context-free language. So you could extend this arrow to uh, CFL. So regular language arrow, 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 CFL. I hope you follow that. So that means that a regular language uh, is a context-free language. Okay? Um, well, I don't have time to go into it, but... Alright. So a corollary, uh, an afterproof, 
and after a, 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 theor a theorem that's usually fairly quickly derived from a main theorem, so a corollary. So every regular language is a, is a context-free language. Every regular language is context-free. Right? Okay, whole new section, the third section of this whole chapter, uh, uh, non-context-free languages. Now, uh, some languages are not context-free. Um, for example, uh, now our previous uh, chapter in uh, section 1.4, fourth section of the previous chapter, we were talking about the pumping lemma. You can remember roughly the pumping lemma. You take a string, uh, split it into three parts, X, Y, and Z, and you can pump that string if uh, you can make copies of the Y part and, and insert them. So, for example, you could have like X, Y, Z, and then it becomes X, Y, Y, Z, or X, Y, 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 Z, and so on. And if the pumped string belongs to the language, then that language... Uh, if, if the language is regular, then uh, there's a, an integer n, positive integer n, uh, such that all strings uh, that have length greater than that integer n, they can be pumped. Right? And, and the pumped strings belong to the language. So, now, uh, so, so we, you can, we use that pumping lemma to, uh, to, di to show that certain languages were not regular. Okay. Now we can do something similar for context-free languages. Okay. There's, there's, there's something similar, uh, a similar kind of pumping lemma. Uh, and I, well, you know, given the time, but uh, roughly um, your string now uh, uh, will be put into five parts. So you could say X, what, uh, well let's say A, B, C, D, E, right? Five parts in your string. And your second and fourth parts, so B and D, these two parts, uh, they can be pumped. So cop copies of this one, cop the, the substring B, you can make copies of it. So you could have A, B, B, C, D, D, or D, 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 or, and, and then E. And that pumped string uh, still belongs to the, the language, if it's a context-free language. Okay, so if you take a string and you pump it, and, it, and, and so long as it's greater than the integer, the pump, so-called pumping length, um, if, if that uh, pumped string then does not belong to uh, the language, then that language is not context-free. It's not a context-free language. So that's, that's the essence of what uh, Section 3 will be about in, in Chapter 2. Okay? I hope that's within 12 minutes. Ciao.